In this web clip, I will go through the methods and results of a series of experiments in which we employ the combination of transcranial magnetic stimulation and electroencephalography to study the relationship between sleep and consciousness. My name is Marcello Massimini. I'm assistant professor at the Department of Biomedical and Clinical Science, the University of Milan. Well, first let me give you a general rationale for using TMSCG in sleep. Everything started about 10 years ago when we asked the question why does consciousness fade during non-REM sleep? This is indeed a basic question, but it has no easy answer. Uh, because while it is true that subjects were waking up from non-REM sleep, especially uh, during the first episode early in the night, report little or no conscious experience, it is also true that during this very same period the brain does not shut down. Actually neurons can display cortical neurons periods of wakefulness-like activity with firing rates that are comparable to wakefulness, interest pa interesting patterns of synchrony in a broad range of frequency, and also they can receive and to some extent process sensory information. So what is the critical change in the brain when we fall in non-REM sleep early in the night and lose consciousness? In trying to address this question, we were guided by a theory the information integration theory of consciousness formulated by Giulio Tononi. And this theory says that consciousness depends not so much on firing rates, synchrony levels, or access to sensory inputs, but rather that consciousness requires the conjoined presence of functional integration and functional differentiation in telomocortical networks. This is the critical factor. Quick example. On the left side here, you see a system that has some degree of differentiation because different elements a specific set of connections but still at the same time the system is clearly modular not integrated the other end of the spectrum on the right side you have a system that is surely integrated because each element is connected to any other element but for this very same reason the system is homogeneous and lacks differentiation in the middle you have a balance between the two in this system each element has a specific set of connection still they are all connected tightly to long and short range connections and by the way this system mimics the general architecture of telomocortical circuits so this according to the theory this balance is, is what's lost when we lose consciousness in sleep telomocortical system either loses integration or its differentiation and this is what we should measure so how do we do that a simple idea is that we shouldn't just observe the system in action, but we should adopt a perturbational approach, a causal approach. So the idea is that we should perturb the system and record the responses it produces to these perturbations. Why? Because in the, in the case of a system that is modular, not integrated, the response would be just local. On the other hand, in a system that is integrated but lacks differentiation, the response would be widespread but stereotypical and simple. Everything is active or everything is silenced. Only in a system that balances, where both integration and information are present, you will have a response that is widespread and specific variable at the same time. In a word, a complex pattern of spatiotemporal activation like this. So this is what we expect. But how do we perform this measure in the human brain? Of course the measure must be non-invasive. We need to perturb directly the cortical neurons and we need to record with good spatiotemporal resolution the response of the rest of the cerebral cortex. How do we do that? One practical way to perform this measurement is to employ a combination of TMS and EEG. Now, to give you an idea of the equipment required for this kind of measurement, I will show you a short movie showing our setup in uh, Milan. Here, on top of the head of the subject, you see the TMS coil. Uh, with TMS, a strong magnetic field, about 2 Tesla, uh, induces currents on cortical neurons and activates a patch of about 2 square centimeters. 
then we can navigate TMS. You see here there's an infrared camera which is keeping track of the position of the coil at the head of the subject and is feeding this information to a navigator, navigation system based on the individual MRI. So we know precisely where we're stimulating and we can go back to the same point in order to be reproducible. Last but not least, we have a 60 channel EEG cap which is connected to an amplifier special amplifier that gates the powerful artifact, magnetic artifact induced by TMS. In the end, we collect EEG responses after a few milliseconds TMS is delivered, and so we work on this cortical-cortical evoked potentials. Now, let's see what happens when somebody falls asleep. The experiment setup is simple. This is the original setup in Madison, Wisconsin. So we put the subject, we prepare everything, we set the coil, we have a few tricks like noise masking to prevent the subject from hearing the click of TMS and also we try to stimulate regions of the brain which are close to the midline in order to avoid muscles artifact that are uh, that happens if you stimulate the lateral aspects of the head. Having said this, the experiment is simple, we stimulate during wakefulness, we collect a sufficient number of trials in order to have a, a solid average and then we let the subject fall asleep and we go on with the stimulation. This is what, are, what happens by the point of view of a channel, single channel under the stimulator during falling asleep. Single trials, voltage is color coded, red is positive, blue is negative. Here you see the corresponding averages during wakefulness, stage one and non REM sleep stage three, four. Now, what happens, you see it clearly on this evoke potential is that during wavefulness TMS triggers a pattern of recurrent wave of activity which lasts about for 300 milliseconds. During stage one, the response is a bit larger, but high frequencies are dampened and the response is actually short lasting. And then you have this big positive negative wave in non REM sleep stage four. This is by the point of view of voltage, one single electric. But we are interested, of course, in the spatial temporal dynamics. And in order to explore this, we need to perform source modeling. So we take into account all electrodes, the individual MRI, and we compute and estimate the currents in the cortex. Now, what you're going to see here is a short movie where you see the kind of response, typical response, we observe in wakefulness. So this is the site of stimulation. You will see milliseconds running here. Here we go. So we have an initial activation under the stimulator and then the activation propagates in a large network in a quite in, in a specific way. So we have a left frontal activation, posterior parietal, and this kind of activation is reproducible and specific for this kind of simulation. In short, the response is widespread and specific structured at the same time not easy to describe and if we try to summarize this special temporal pattern in a single shot we obtain this kind of representation where you have that uh, cortical areas that are significantly activated by TMS are depicted and color coded according to the latency of their activation so you have a long range specific pattern of activation as expected now what happens a few minutes later when the same subject is in deep sleep and unconscious. Stimulation is the same, same intensity, same everything except for the subject is unconscious. What you see here is that the brain is still reactive, actually the response is even larger, is this positive negative wave and look at the pattern of activation which is critically different from wakefulness. You have a strong activation under the stimulator but the response remains local, stereotypical and local, localized to the stimulated modules. As if connectivity is broken down. In this case, the thalamocortic system behaves as a system that is not integrated. And we can represent this pattern in one single snapshot like this. Now, one question is, maybe this breakdown of connectivity is simply due to the fact that cortical neurons are hyperporized and you just need a stronger pulse to overcome this level of hyperporization and then trigger widespread pattern which is complex and interesting enough. So we tried to stimulate the brain with higher TMS intensity up to 160 motor threshold, a real hammer, and the best result we can get in this case is a bigger wave 
and the pattern of activation that is yes widespread but very simple it's a big slow wave that propagates over the cortex like a noise spot of course widespread but homogeneous response no differentiation in here so to summarize the result in wakefulness we obtain responses that are both widespread and differentiated specific and interesting in sleep if we simulate the brain at the same intensity we have a response that is local which fits with the breakdown of connectivity and integration on the other hand if we try to overcome this breakdown of connectivity by hitting hard the brain the best result we can get is a big wave that spreads like a noise spot in an homogeneous fashion in this sense empirical results are in line with theoretical prediction another interesting prediction is that the complexity of the cortical response to TMS should recover during dreaming when the brain, albeit disconnected from the external environment, generates a conscious experience that is as vivid as during wakefulness. So, this is a subject during wakefulness. This is the same subject in non-REM sleep. You see the simple response. And then, this is the response obtained while the subject was dreaming in REM sleep. You see a clear recovery of the spread and the differentiation of the response. In a word, a recovery of complexity of the spatial temporal pattern. So overall this result suggests that perturbing the right leg cortex and recording its immediate reaction represent an interesting way uh, to assess the brain's capacity for consciousness, at least on a course level. Now I hope you enjoyed this uh, short clip and uh, I wish you good luck with your studies.